Hi, I'm James with TVS Pro, and this is the full instruction video on the Osmo Pocket. Man, it's so cute and teeny tiny. Nice and tight. Hold it like that. Okay. So rather a fun event in New York, cool venue, Good Morning America Studios right on Times Square. And they were a little cruel because they all gave us one and we were able to play with it there in the studio, even walk out to the street if we wanted to, but they did not let us keep it. But we appreciate DJI for being on top of it and getting us an Osmo Pocket here. I wanted to get this video out a little bit sooner. However, I wanted to wait a few days because I wanted to be able to take this out and really play with it, put it to the test. So I've been able to travel with it. I gotta tell ya, hashtag better than GoPro. It really is all the same specs as a GoPro, except it's three axis stabilization and it's not a fish eye and the color from DJI is just so much better. All in all, to have this little guy and this little touch screen on the back and we'll get into it about its purpose swiping left up down forward and sideways and backwards so without any further ado let's dive in i'm going to start with the box uh, it just is a little box uh, cardboard in nature and it will come with a case as well as two adapters that fit onto the front of uh, the contacts that are there one is lightning and the other is uh, USB so that you can plug it into your phone. You absolutely don't have to use it with your phone, but it's there if you need it. And this will also allow us to add a bunch of other accessories. There is a tilt and pan wheel accessory that will allow us to control the gimbal separately. There is an extension arm. There's a whole slew of different accessories, including ND filters and things that they will release in due time. Uh, right now there's only a few different accessories available there's a module that acts as a base as well as a charger as well as a media card transfer device to connect to your computer it will also allow you to connect to your phone via Wi-Fi uh, so you can connect to it that way right now I've just got the lightning adapter on here if you fold it inward then it will protect that from being jostled around or bumped or broken 
uh, and so you can do that for travel. But if you want to and you leave it out, when you power it off, it folds itself in this manner so that you can rotate it and stick it inside the case that it comes with easy enough. And they were thoughtful and cut out that out of the strap that holds it down so that it can poke out. But my advice would be to not leave that out. Uh, and they also made a little cutout for us so that you can charge it while it's in its case if you wanted to. And the micro SD card is accessible uh, when it's inside this little travel case as well. Really the only thing that this won't do that a GoPro won't is it's not waterproof. They do have a waterproof case that they have not made available yet, but it will allow you to dive down 60 meters. And on top of that, some of these other accessories it will latch onto as well as that underwater case and add that little two prong GoPro attachment. So now you could put it on any of your existing GoPro attachment that you've got handlebars and chesties and helmets and venties and all those different things uh, so that you could use this on those. So DJI has kind of sent a little bit of GoPro fire there and being $50 less at least right now being December 19th, 2018. Uh, yeah, 19th, 2018, uh, $349 retail, so 50 bucks less than a Hero 7 right now. And it's just slick, teeny, tiny. And it has, I've dropped it a few times and it is still working like a champ. So it's pretty darn rugged. So first thing you're gonna wanna do is power it on. There are two buttons only on the entire Osmo Pocket. There is a record button and a power on off that also acts as your recenter or selfie button as well. The other thing that this will do besides recentering and going into selfie mode is that if you press it, it will cycle between photos and videos. So you don't have to go into the menu and actually reselect photo or video. You can easily push that function button and go back and forth between the two. So if I just press this and hold it for a couple seconds, maybe even just one second, it kicks on and I would recommend holding it flat and level when you power that on, or even better yet, rest it on a flat surface when you power that on. That way the gimbal will calibrate correctly and it is nice and flat. Now from there, and it doesn't take long, so let's just time this, DJI says five seconds from power on to start recording. Let's just time it. One, two, three, four, five, I'm recording. It's accurate, I'm recording right now. It is really, really fast. So even if it's in your pocket, I mean, you can, I'll stop record, turn this off, put it inside its case. And if it were in my pocket and I take it out, it is really simple to just unlatch this, pull it out, kick it on, and I'm ready to go within just like I said, five seconds. And so you don't have to worry about missing shots. DJI did this right. As I mentioned before, you don't have to use your phone. You've got a touchscreen on the back and that gives you enough reference with the buttons that you could really shoot however you want. In the shooting that I've done, I haven't even used my phone, except for at the day of the event. They gave us an iPhone so that they could do it because the Mimo app was not yet developed and available on the App Store. If you want to use your phone, that is the app that you're going to want to download first. Mimo, M-I-M-O. If you're not using your phone, you've got your record button and that recenter button. If I double tap it, it recenters. So as you move this around and you're jostling it and whatever else, all of a sudden, like right now, it's not perfectly straight. So if I double tap that, it straightens it out. If I triple tap this button, it goes into selfie mode. If you're a vlogger or Instagram, social media, whatever, you're gonna love this mode because it automatically goes into auto track mode. You'll notice green brackets around your face and it is tracking your face. Now it's not flawless and it's pretty sensitive and if you get too far away, it won't track that same face, but from arm's distance, it works perfect. And it's the same auto track that we've been used to on the other flight systems. So actually I'm gonna hit record here and if I put this down on this table, it's now tracking my face and I can move around and do my blogging or vlogging just the same and it's tracking my face. Kind of a handy tool. The other way to control the camera is via the touch screen. You can control the tilt up and down. On the far right side there is a light gray bar or bracket and you can put your finger on it and you can tilt it up or down from there. 
Now let's get into the actual interface of the Osmo Pocket. The touchscreen acts as a menu system and you can swipe up, down, left or right and each one of those will access a different part of it. If I start from the left hand side and swipe right, that is my play function. It's accessing the photos and videos. To see all of that other content, you have to swipe up from the bottom to the top. And if there's a video, well then you can press play and you can review that. Even if it's a time lapse or a standard video, whatever it may be, you can review those. If you want it any time, you can touch it again. The pause button appears, you can pause it and continue scrolling through your content. From there, if I swipe left, it takes me back from right to left, then it takes me back to the main screen. If I start from the top and swipe down, this is where some of the settings that aren't really main or major settings will be, but you can still access them. You'll notice dots along the bottom and I can scroll to the left. This first one with the slate picture is about quality and depending on the resolution or uh, uh, size of JPEGs that you're shooting, it may or may not allow you to access the fine or super fine modes. This one, the gear, where it defaults to, is your gearbox. If I touch that, this is gonna show you your battery life as well as tilt control. There's a calibration, if I didn't already say it, as well as your media card storage and everything else. That is all in there, and if I swipe back up, then it takes me back, back home. If I swipe back down, now I can scroll to the right. This is changing the aspect ratio of your photos. If you simply touch it, and now it goes to widescreen, and then it goes back to a four by three. If I go here, it's kind of a, it's supposed to represent like a light bulb or something. And as I touch this, it dims the brightness of the display. As I continue to touch it, it increases in brightness. There it is full. If I touch it again, it goes back dim. So one, two, three, and it cycles through the whole thing. So if you want it bright, touch it twice from the very lowest point. So there's basically low, medium, and high brightness. And I will note, if I swipe down, if I push the function button, it goes back to that main screen. Where you'll probably be spending most of your time is by swiping from the right to the left. If I swipe there, here's where I can change my photos, my resolution, and frame rate, and so on. So if I go to photo, for example, you'll notice that there are three dots to the side of that. Those three dots tell me that there are more options and I can continue swiping. So I'm gonna swipe over there and I've got it selected to 16 by nine. Do I want a countdown? No, but if I wanted to, I could go to three, five, or seven seconds. And at that point, if I select it, hit the fun function button, takes me back out here. If I touch this, it's now counting down five, four, three, will pose and the click just means that it took a picture. We'll swipe back over here, go into photo and take that countdown off. By touching it, it selects it and it takes me back to the home screen. If I wanna go back into there, I can change three by two, four by three and 16 by nine. Swiping one more takes me back home. Swipe again and now I've got video, let's go there. I've got 4K 16 by nine ratio, so that's not true 4K or cinematic 4K, it is ultra HD, and I've got up to 60 frames a second that I can choose from. I can scroll to 1080p, 16 by nine again, and it will give me the same option to choose between 30 and 60 frames. That's the only options that you have on the video portion. After video, I can go to slow-mo. This is shot at 1080p, and it is four times the speed. It just says 4X. My guess is that it is a 120, I doubt that it's a 180. From there, I can go time-lapse. Now, time-lapse gives me two options. I can go to just a standard time-lapse, or I can do motion time-lapse. If I choose motion time-lapse, I select that, and on the bottom left-hand side appears a number with a letter, S. That tells me three second increments. I can touch that and I can choose larger increments if increments if I want to, up to, well, how far does it go? I didn't even know, but it, I can do a 60 second interval. Uh, you're gonna have to do it a 60 second interval. Yeah, three hours will only give you a six second video, but you'd see the sun and clouds move a lot more. For general people watching and a bunch of crowds at like Disneyland or something like that, you might want to choose a lower interval like three seconds. And then you can choose the duration. One hour, two hours, three hours, 20 minutes. Probably 10 to 20 minutes is gonna be your average motion time lapse. If that's what I want, I can hit next. 
in the middle of the screen is going to be a plus sign. This is telling you that you need to add your starting location and your end location. So at this point, it puts it into this mode where I can move this gimbal and I can rotate it over this way. And if that's where I want it to start, I hit the plus sign. Now that the, I have selected that, the number one up on the top left appears not so dim, it's more high lit. And it's now looking for point two. So now I'm gonna rotate it this way, maybe tilt it down a little bit and add my second point. At that point, it gives you a green check mark and from there, you hit record. Once I hit record, it now just went to the starting point and it's now gonna take 20 minutes at a three second interval to go to the end point and there's your motion time lapse. The next option down is panoramic. If I swipe over there, I can choose between a three by three and it's taking three photos by three photos, basically making like a 40 something megapixel panorama. It's gonna take a picture, take a picture, take a picture and do it in this quad so it's much bigger. Or you can do your standard 180 degrees from the left to the right. Play with it, it's kind of fun. Those are the options from scrolling right to left. Now, if I scroll from the bottom up, I get some of the more basic uh, options of recentering, toggling it from follow and whatever else. So we'll start from the top left. The arrows with the dot is just another recentering tool. It's the same thing as if you were to double tap the function button. The top right is just, again, another duplicate. Instead of going into selfie mode by triple tapping the function button, you can press it there and it goes into there. Now the option on the bottom left has a stick figure, person walking, and if you touch it, it goes to a fast person walking. If you're familiar with any of the other Osmo or Ronin products, in those apps and touch screens and things, you can change how stiff some of those levels are, how responsive it is, the acceleration, the strength, and all those different things. This does the same thing, but allows you to change less. You can't fine tune any of that, but you can tell it, am I just walking around or am I rapidly moving, running or whatnot? So if I touch it, it goes into a fast motion. So if I were holding it on a car or running with it, it's going to tighten up the stiffness levels of the three axis stabilizer. The other option in here on the bottom right is whether you're changing it to follow around. So if I triple tap this, get it back forward again. I gave my Osmo Pocket to my son and let him walk around with it. Well, what I noticed because he's not a camera guy, he's three years old, he was holding it like this and so it was constantly looking down on the ground. A way to fix that is that bottom right option. If I touch it, the first option it gives is tilt locked. What that does is now even though I hold it down, the camera is still facing forward. So now as he was walking around, we could still face forward and the footage turned out okay. The other thing I can do is touch it and it goes into FPV mode. All this is doing is not stabilizing the roll function. So as I roll this, it rolls the roll function. I call it the Superman mode. That is really all you need to know on the screen of the Osmo Pocket. Let's get into the app portion of it. When you download the app, and again, that is the M-I-M-O app, and when you first open it up, they've actually got some pretty good, decent tutorials. They're really quick, there's no explanation really, and it's not in depth. But if you need some quick tips and things, this is a great place to go to. If the Osmo Pocket is on and the app is on, all you have to do is plug it in, and in a matter of seconds, it sees the Osmo Pocket and you're up and running. There's my video. I don't know that it's going to switch. Maybe it will if I go like this, maybe like this. No, it's not. I'm not gonna be able to orientate it. And if you're wondering how I'm doing this, all I'm doing is connected, I'm airplaying to an Apple TV, Apple TV HDMI into the monitor. Everything on here is basically going to be a duplicate of what we just interfaced on the screen of the Osmo Pocket. Now, keep in mind, your phone is a lot heavier than the Osmo Pocket, so I would recommend holding the phone and letting the Osmo Pocket dangle rather than the other way around. If I hold the Osmo Pocket, it over time will probably put too much strain on these contacts and maybe something will break. So I would prefer uh, holding the phone rather than the Osmo Pocket. If I want, on the top left, I've got my home button and it takes me back home. Now I've got that uh, 
camera image and that takes me right back to this home screen. It tells me that I'm in stills mode, JPEG, I'm at 79% and I've got 5,214 stills that I can take in that mode. If I push the function button, it cycles from photo to video and now it'll tell me I've got one hour and 23 minutes worth of video. You'll notice on the left hand side, I have got 1080p at 30. It tells me what I'm at. If I touch that, well then I can easily change it and go 4K at either 30 or 60. The picture of the, uh, of the camera that's on that left hand side, if I touch that, that allows me to access those same functions that were there when I swiped from the bottom up. So changing it to fast motion if I was running or in a car with it and locking or unlocking tilt and roll. On the bottom left, you've got three dots and these will access your video portions of it. So my format, if I want MP4, I can change it to uh, .mov. My Flickr, if I want, I've got a grid. Let's put in some grid lines there or some grid lines with the diagonal. Wow, look at that. Now it's like bullseye target. Those are just annoying to me, so I'm gonna say off. And I've actually got some overexposure zebra bracketing if I want to, I can turn that on, and it's going to tell me where it is overexposed. You'll also notice in that menu, you have got a pro tab. If I touch that, it only unlocks a couple different things. One of those options is white balance. I get that and I can auto detect it. It's got options for sunny, cloudy, incandescent, and so on, but if I want to, I can go to the bottom and do custom. And now I can customize my white balance by temperature. So 4,600 Kelvin or 5,600 Kelvin or whatever it may be. I've also got an audio level. Right now it's set to auto, but it just gives you a low, moderate, or high. So if somebody's talking really soft, then maybe you want to up that volume. And the microphone is on the bottom of the Osmo Pocket. But if somebody is loud and obnoxious like me, well then just leave it in auto or low and let it do its thing. The other thing that it adds is my histogram. This is gonna show you, it's another way of seeing where you're overexposed, but more so where your highlights are, where your darks are, where you can fix that in relativity to the screen. And the last option that is on there is your focus mode. I would imagine since you're gonna be probably walking around and doing whatever with the Osmo Pocket, you might wanna leave it in AFC, which is just continuous. And the other one is just gonna lock it into wherever you've touched on the screen. Moving to the right side of the screen, again, these are just duplicate things. I've got a rotating arrow, so I can touch that with the camera and it will rotate into me. Guess what, I'm in manual. I need to go to auto, there we go. Now that's a little bit better. And if I, and you can see the green brackets, so it's in auto track, it's tracking me right now. And if I touch that, it goes back to the beginning. Now I can still use the function button here. It doesn't negate these buttons on the Osmo Pocket. I can triple tap that and it still goes. But now with the phone, you've got that as a duplicate way of doing it. I've got my record button on there as well. I've got my recenter just above the record button as well. And you'll notice you've got this kind of a uh, faint gray uh, joystick. I can touch my thumb to this virtual joystick and now I've got 360 degree control of that gimbal. That to me is where the phone really comes in handy. If you're not using the phone, as I mentioned before, on that right side, all you can do is slide it up and down. You can't control pan. I can get this really good, slow, easy moving pan. The further I move my thumb, the faster it moves. So if I move my thumb drastically, then it will move fast. But if I just move it a teeny bit from that point, then it just moves really, really slow. And that can give you a really good pan. It's like a tripod. I can, next to that record button, swipe uh, into the different modes as well. Uh, the function button will only cycle between stills and video. So with the phone, if you wanted to access motion time lapse and stuff like that, then you do have to swipe from the bottom or top on that right side into those different functions. On the bottom of the screen, you've got, if you are in video mode, you will see your shutter speed, your ISO, and your exposure values, and you can adjust those as well. If I, uh, since I'm in video mode now on the left-hand side, I can now go into here and from auto, I can go into manual and now I can manually adjust my ISO, my shutter speed or my exposure value. Or I can just put it right back into auto. 
And then the last function is the play button that is down on the bottom right hand side. I can access this to access all of the other videos and things that I've done. So here's a quick tip. If you are shooting in 4K, so if I go to this one, my kids wanted to go see Santa. I can press play and it's going to review this, but when I'm done, so if I go back out and I hit select, and I select that one, on the bottom left hand side there's an arrow and I can download. However, if you have shot this in 4K, it will not let you transfer that video from the Osmo, which is accessing the micro SD card, into your phone. It's just not capable of doing it. Yet, it says the file is not supported on the current model. But, if on the video, on the bottom left hand side, there isn't a 4K symbol like this one, then I can hit that same download arrow and it will transfer it directly from here to my phone without compressing it. It will be at 1080p. It will let me do that with my stills as well as motion time lapses and things, but if you have shot it in 4K, it will not let you transfer it. You will have to remove the micro SD card, put it in a reader, or plug it into the bottom via USB Type-C and directly into your computer and transfer it that way. When I'm done, I can simply unplug my phone, the screen comes back on, I power this off, stick it in my case, and I'm off and running. That's the long and the short of it of the DJI Osmo Pocket. I've had a lot of fun with it. If you've got some questions or concerns, comments, whatever, please feel free to leave those down below and we will get to those as soon as humanly possible. If it is longer question, troubleshooting, and whatever else, I highly suggest that you uh, contact the dealer or source from whom you have purchased your DJI product. If you are watching this and you have already purchased the Osmo Pocket, I do hope that you found this video beneficial and will hit that subscribe button. If you are watching this video and you have not yet purchased the Osmo Pocket or any other DJI product or any other product in the video production world, I hope that you will give us a chance, reach out to us, or go to our website for more information. That is the Osmo Pocket. I hope it was entertaining. Thank you for watching. I'm James with TVS Pro. Good luck and happy shooting.